Hello, Beirut, and uh, good evening. It's, I believe, uh, 9 p.m. your time. Yes, uh, it is. Good. So good evening, everyone. Good evening, whoever is watching from Lebanon. Uh, I am here in Los Angeles, and good morning, Los Angeles. Yeah. We're starting our day with a beautiful sunny day today. Um, uh, uh, I would like to welcome you all and thank you for being uh, loyal to the Asian World Twin Festival. We're always happy to have you. Uh, we've been doing a lot of great events and uh, many of you have been following us, which is fantastic. It's because of people like you guys that uh, this festival survives. So uh, with further, uh, with that's, uh, that's what I, I had to say. Now I would like to introduce you to two of the producers uh, Isaac Fahad and Sam Lahoud, and uh, hi everyone. And the and the moderator will be, as usual, Christopher Krisa. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Thank you, Chris. All right, I'm I'm very excited about this moderation because you you have a fantastic film. I mean. It, it's all believable, the script works, it moves along, the characters are so diverse, but honest and, and so real. And there's a lot of humor and there's a lot of drama. And, and to put those two together in a way that people laugh and cry in a, in a movie and are touched is, uh, is quite a feat. So congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Certainly, certainly. You know, the. Was it a lot of fun making this movie or was it all hard work? Sam, go ahead. <laughs> it was a, in fact, it was a challenge making this movie. It was a real challenge uh, on different levels, uh, Chris. First, I would like to do a small introduction around this film. This film is a story by Isaac Fahad. He created the first story and uh, started the idea and it's based on it somehow a true story some on true elements that happened with Isaac when, when his wife was delivering. And then he got inspired by this incident for uh, delivering the first baby at home. And he wanted to do a comedy, a, a dramedy in fact, around uh, uh, babies and hospitals and couples. And the idea developed bit by bit. So it was a story by Isaac, and then the script was written by Isaac Fahad and a colleague of us, uh, Doris Saba. And uh, both of them, they are writing their first script in terms of executed script. They have experiences in other scripts or in consultancy or in correcting scripts or script doctoring. And they have both a, a good experience. Isaac come, comes from a background in uh, uh, film uh, distribution and marketing and communication. <clears throat> and also uh, Doris is a uh, young- and cinema uh, exhibition. Exactly, in cinema. And uh, Doris is a young uh, filmmaker. She's a producer, director, and uh, a scriptwriter. And uh, they both also, we collaborate, uh, we work together on organizing the film festivals. So Isaac came to me with this idea and he wrote the script together with Doris and I did a script consultancy. We worked together on the story arc and on developing some uh, dialogues and the character arc. And when we came to uh, the execution uh, phase to uh, do this film, it was really challenging because we, we were uh, working on a moderate to low budget, let's say, and uh, uh, with with, uh, with uh, actors from the class A, from the first level, uh, top actors in Lebanon, and uh, with a young director who is doing also the first experience, and the most uh, elements of the production were doing somehow their first feature film, with some, of course, exceptions, those who are doing second or third feature film. So at, uh, all in all, the film was, uh, the team was a young team and uh, uh, with a limited uh, somehow budget and limited execution time, like 16 days of uh, filming. Uh, definitely it was fun to see the results uh, that, we, that we reached and uh, we are very happy with the results relatively. Uh, however, the execution uh, uh, 
period and phase was really very challenging and uh, we did it with a lot of stress, <laughs> uh, but uh, we reached a good uh, result. Can you share uh, one of the, the most stressful situations? So many things go wrong in, in, in any big project, whether it's a battle or a, a movie, and they're kind of the same. Yes, share one, one of the most stressing uh, moments when I was in China, in Shanghai Film Festival, so since we are now in the Asian World Film Festival, and Isaac calls me from Lebanon to tell me that the uh, production design of the set of the hospital will cost 36,000 US dollars and our budget is 8,000. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had to join forces and I left uh, the festival in Shanghai one day before, uh, changed my ticket and came back and went with Isaac to the set on location, location and with uh, Doris and other crew members and we were obliged to do the uh, execution ourselves in order to uh, do it with our uh, with what is uh, and this happened five days before the shooting by the way wow. so we're obliged to change the schedule yeah, one week, to do other one scenes week. before one week and then uh, to go back to the uh, hospital scenes uh, at a later stage you 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 have now got me back to all these stuff and i'm just remembering it now moment by moment well so all right how did you what did you get rid of to to take it from 36 down to where you could work did you drop some of the props some of the painting some of the <laughs> supplier <laughs> change supplier change, change suppliers and do it yourself wow wow yeah okay and can you give us an example of something that that worked out so well, so flawlessly that you 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 wanted to pop champagne. Yeah, in fact, in fact, the the uh, the acting I can say like hats off for the actors. You know, this is one uh, element that made us uh, uh, feel relaxed a little bit. The actors were very well prepared. We did uh, good rehearsals, and we are working with professional people who know exactly how to work with the schedule, although they are stars. So they are always on time. They are always prepared, well prepared. And every time you, uh, you, uh, you watch them performing, you feel as if literally you want to open a champagne for each one of them. And those uh, actors, they, uh, they made the film, I think. They made it uh, happen as it is. Yes, definitely. I don't know, Isaac, if you have, if you want to add something, I'm not, I'm taking off. No, 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 no. I, I'm just enjoying listening. Uh, and, and well, I, I would say that um, there is nothing that it made me think that it's a big challenge, uh, like a special challenge. I just thought that all, all what we faced, all the obstacles and all the challenges, it, it's what happens, it, it, uh, it's what goes on in every film, in every project. You know, and I, I was just like, um, I was thinking about all the obstacles that we have faced. And I realized that in all the projects that uh, I was part of before, I realized that we have faced exactly the same project, whether in the pre-production or on set or in the post-production. Then I, I realized that, okay, it's fine. Uh, we did a good job and this is how things go. You don't expect any project to be flawless. So... <laughs> I take my hats off to to you guys as producers. I tell you, there's one job. I mean, I work as an actor, and and uh, that's that's just you know, if you do your homework, it's it's a wonderful, fluid process. But your process is just one problem after another, coming out of nowhere. You lose a location, the weather turns bad, somebody gets sick, something breaks, the car doesn't start, the camera's broken, and and you've got two seconds to fix it. I I, I couldn't do that. Thank you, guys. You must have done a hell of a job. Thank you, Chris. Let, let's well, it's, right. it's, the, it's the profession of uh, problem solving, and this is, uh, uh, this is what the producer and the director and the cinematographer and the filmmaker should do. Everyone, they should be problem solvers. Yes, yes, definitely. definitely. And you know, everybody wants to graduate to the level where you can just throw money at the problem. But, uh, you know, that's that's not so so typical or so common that's, that's not that's not challenging <laughs> yeah it's pleasant <laughs> perhaps or less less harsh but yeah it's not challenging let's talk a little bit about the actors because every one of them every one of them i fell in love with 
and and that's that's wonderful writing and wonderful acting. I mean, Mr. Hassad, a martial act. I mean, so, such a deep character and and so much, you know, a bit of a scammer, but but a lovable man, and and certainly in love with his wife, and you know, everything was perfect about that guy. And he had wonderful arcs. He got you know, he, so many different colors were written for him, and he did them so well. Have you worked with him before? Uh, this is the first time we work with Ammar. Ammar is a big star in Lebanon. He comes from theater and from TV. So mainly he was a, a theater actor and a TV actor, and he's a big star. And I can say that uh, Ammar also impressed me. This is our first collaboration. Impressed me by the level of professionalism and ethics he has. In fact, all the actors and the team, they were very ethical, very committed. All of them, indeed. All of them, exactly. So, uh, uh, and uh, I can I can say that we did uh, a long uh, a casting sessions, and we were considering a lot of other actors before, and then suddenly uh, we we started thinking. I don't remember anymore who suggested Ammar, uh, but he was all the time uh, in our mind. But we said that maybe Ammar is not available, or maybe uh, uh, he won't uh, take the film. So, and then when we sent them the script, when Isaac called him and talked, spoke with him, and he wrote the script, he told him, this script, I want to make it. I love the character. I want to be Masad. And, uh, and he did a great performance, as, as you said. And there is one thing that I want to, uh, to uh, uh, like I was a witness for something, because I was doing the acting coach during the film. And uh, we were preparing before every scene with the actors. And uh, Ammar had the last scene, the last the, one of the scenes that is the, not the last scene, I mean the, the scene in the hospital where he is with his babies in front of him and he's speaking with them. And a man who was waiting for 10 years in, until he gets a baby and he got those twins. And he had this long monologue. And Isaac was very attached to the monologue and myself too, and Doris too. So we were like, we felt that this monologue came from our heart. Like Isaac wrote it and then they, he worked with, uh, with Doris on, the, on finalizing it. And then I, I added my touch also. And we, we, all the three of us, we felt that this, uh, like this, that this monologue is somehow sacred. It's the baby. We, yeah, we, we want it it's as it is. It's, it's the baby, yeah. it's, it's a very, very emotional monologue and we want it to be performed as is. And in fact, when we launched the film, we the first trailer we did for the film, it was one minute on scenes on the sound of Ammar Shala saying the monologue. This was the, the launching uh, uh, trailer and everyone was calling, what is this film? And when we reached the set and we want to uh, uh, rehearse for this monologue, Ammar told me, told me, listen, Sam, I, I'm not feeling the text very well. I feel that if I want to speak with my kids, I want to tell them other things. So can I improvise? And I told him, listen, uh, Ammar, you are asking a question that is very difficult on all of us. I, I think Isaac will not accept. And we, we feel that this monologue is very, very dear to us. He said, don't worry, just trust me and let me do the rehearsal myself and we can do it once. And if it didn't work, if it didn't work, just we repeat it the way it is written. And apparently, uh, uh, Ammar, he told me that I don't feel that I have to say it this way. I will not change a lot. I may twist some ideas and some sentences and add a little bit for myself. Just let me be real. Let me be the father who wants to speak with his kids. And I told him definitely, uh, with all respect, I respect your professionalism and do it. Don't worry, do it. And I asked Isaac, and he said, Isaac, that's fine. He can, he can go with it. We don't have a problem. You know, it's difficult when the writer is on set as a producer. It's a pain in the neck. You know this, Chris? Like, <laughs> Isaac was the writer and the producer, and he was always <laughs> present all the time. And then... Ammar entered the, the room and uh, he, he rehearsed alone. I didn't interfere. I left him to rehearse alone. And when he came and he started performing and he did it like once from the beginning till the end. We did Only it one take. It. The one take for the first time. And then they, they, they took some inserts later. But the first time when we took this one take and suddenly it finished, he finished. And we felt like goosebumps. 
and everyone started uh, clapping, clapping and applauding him on, on, on set. And you can feel uh, how he, how much he was involved in the character. And definitely he said it his way. Wonderful, wonderful that you guys were, were willing to work like that. Now, now, let's talk a little bit about that since you just brought that up. You've got two producers, main producers who, who nobody always agrees on things in any relationship. And then you've got a director. And, and so who's calling the shots and, and how does that work? Who, who's wearing the chief's hat? Definitely on set, the director was doing the work, but we were, because we are, you know, we are professionals in, in dealing with uh, filmmaking and it's not, it's not my first film. Uh, some of the people, they were learning and the director was young, you know, uh, 27 years old uh, director doing a feature film. But on set, while we are on location, the director was leading the, all the, the production. Definitely, at night, we were doing an evaluation, sitting together, all the main key team, Isaac, myself, the director, the AD, uh, Doris was doing also uh, assistant director. So we're sitting and with the cinematographer and the sound sometimes, depending on what we need, and we're doing an evaluation and preparing for the next day. But during the, sh the shoot, uh, it was uh, uh, smoothly led by the director. Okay. And I interfere on, on the, on the coach. Acting, coach. As acting coach, you know, as acting coach, I was interfering. And Isaac was interfering sometimes with some things, but not during the shoot, like when we take a pause or when we can interfere without doing any uh, interference for the flow of the production. So did, did either of you guys then sit with the actors before the scene and, and talk about or go through it and, and want to see what they were going to bring before they stepped on the stage to work with the director? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we're doing a rehearsal before every scene. And, Locking and, and rehearsal. And, and you're there with the director during the rehearsal? Yes. Yeah. yes. And Isaac, are you there too? Yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> okay. Long days. How, how many hours a day were they? 14 to 16. Like, exactly. Some, sometimes we, we used to shoot from 14 to 16 uh, to 16 hours consecutive. Wow. 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 But I guess the, the part, part of the success of the shooting or of the, of the set of the set success was the, uh, uh, was the rehearsal. Uh, and the pre-production time, uh, we had lots of, um, uh, lots of reading sessions. And that was great. Uh, I mean, I, I, would, I would say that I, I would give it back like 50 or 60% of, of the relief uh, on the set was due to, to, the, uh, uh, to the reading sessions. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. reading and rehearsal, yes. Rehearsal. Yeah. So I wanna ask one question about rehearsal in, in, in the scenes. Um, Rami Atala. Yeah. Yes. Rami Atala. Yeah, Atala. There was a, a scene there where he comes up, he's in the hospital and he comes out of the door and he, and he walks past the, the uh, disinfectant dispenser and he, and he yeah. touches it and he smells it and wipes his hands. Was, was that <laughs> improv or did you guys tell him to do that? <laughs> well, actually, it was, it was written differently. It was written as if uh, uh, he first smells it. And he likes it so much in a way that he uses it as, like, as, a, as a perfume. But after shame. He looks left and right, yeah. He looks left and right, and he sees that, that there is no, nobody there seeing him. So he puts it on his face. But then he said, he said I, I wouldn't do this, you know, because in my character, in my role, I, I'm, I, uh, I just come from the cottage, and, and I'm, I'm like a peasant. So I don't think I would be interested in a good smell. You know, so I, I, I better reject it and I, I better do it like, like I didn't like the smell and it doesn't mean to me anything. So I just wipe it up with, the, with, my, with my clothes. And I said, okay, it goes well, do it. Let's go. Yeah, wonder, I wonder where that came from. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's the, the professionalism of the actors. Well, uh, um, I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't expect it to be any better than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the professionalism, they, they helped, they pushed, 
they they have risen their their film so so high and they helped a lot um, they prepare they prepare they prepare very well they, they were prepared yeah 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 they, they contributed so much to the beauty of the film to the success of the film uh, to the uh, to the role's consistency you know be, because they 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 uh, they were thinking they were thinking the whole time and they gave a huge attention to the consistency of the roles and they all come i believe all of them all of them come from from a theater background so like they they uh, they gave theatrical uh, theatrical attention to uh, to a cinematic role right yeah you could see that they had the depth and the yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. theatrical actor yeah uh, Speaking of, of him, now his love interest, the, the nurse who did such a fabulous job, what was her name? Hind. 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 Hayat, Hayat. And in the film is Hayat, but her name is Hind Khadra. Yeah. Okay. The character is Hayat. Now, was was that written in initially or did you bleed into that? Because I mean it wasn't essential, it was wonderful. It, was, it wasn't essential. It was written. Story. It was it was written. It was written, yeah. It was okay. all planned, yeah. Yeah, she did such a wonderful job. What a perfect woman! I just, just kind Indeed. and beautiful and at ease Indeed. and polite. She's a good actress. And so conservative and so conservative with all this beauty and the physical appearance. She's so conservative, like, like that. That was so teasing to to him, like to Atalla, and as well as to the audience. Like, how how could such a beautiful nurse or beautiful girl be that much conservative and uh, that much nice and that much benign, like. Right. Yeah. As a character, yes. Yeah. Act, As act, a character. Yeah. Well, let's speak about the. Uh, I mean, the actual we talked about. All did a wonderful job. Let's talk about the wives now, uh, who also did a great job, and and casting those two. How did you? How did you plan that? They they were also very lovable and. Uh, and very believable in some interesting situations. So yes, definitely. In fact, while while Isaac was uh, writing with uh, Doris, uh, from the first day they were thinking of Pamela Kick for the role of the uh, of the woman, the blonde. You know, uh, Pamela. What's the character name? Uh, Ray. 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 So Ray. Uh, Ray. She was. She was from the first day. He was thinking of uh, her, and we were always speaking like we did. We did uh, eight sessions of six hours each in uh, in script doctoring, and all the time Isaac was saying, "This is." Pa he, uh, sometimes he referred to her as Pamela, so he was thinking of the character, the, the actress from the first day, and Pamela is one of the best actresses in uh, in Lebanon, as she's one of the most famous actresses also. Indeed, with a lot of experience on t uh, TV, some experience on theater. Uh, with George Chabaz and uh, with uh, some also film experience. But this is, I can say that in film, this is her main, uh, her first lead role. And uh, in cinema, I mean, on TV, she took a lot of lead roles, but in, in cinema, she didn't take lead roles in, uh, in films. And this one was the first uh, like uh, lead role for her. And uh, for Rula, in fact, for this character, we had many options before thinking of Rula because we were thinking of a different physical shape because Isaac was wanted a, uh, a lady that is a little bit obese Fat. and with a strong uh, physical uh, presence. So like she enters the door and she opens it. He, he wanted a lady uh, from this uh, shape. And then uh, after discussing a lot, uh, uh, the, the film in terms of uh, uh, equilibrium between the character in terms of semiotics and cinematography and we want, we want this uh, uh, everything to be smooth to the eyes of the audience and to be uh, to, to convert well you know together so we felt no we want an actress that can fit with Pamela and this contradiction should not come from the physical it should come from the internal from the character from the mind from the education, uh, from the background. So we, want, we wanted a, cha a challenging actress that can look uh, uh, soft, uh, petite shape, fits with Pamela together as a balance in the screen, but at the same time can, can show the contrast in the face expressions and in the character and the approach to acting. 
And Rula, Rula is, a, is an old friend of mine. We know each other since uh, university, since more than 15 years, and uh, I, a little bit more. And uh, when we, uh, and she did a film last year called Khapsa. She was the first, the lead role. And in this film, she did a very good performance. She, uh, she, she comes also from TV and she did a couple of experiences on, on, on theater. And then when she read the script and we casted her for the role, we felt all of us, everyone on in the team, we felt that th this is the perfect match. And uh, Rula also, she has this, uh, beauty in the in the in the face, yet it's not very uh, soft. It has this uh, uh, strong beauty that pops up from the screen, and uh, and she did the character very well. And you can, I think that the dialogue that they had together in the in the room when they first connect, I think this is one of the strongest dialogues I have ever seen in the Lebanese cinema. Yes, it was a beautiful scene. Wow. And, and the work she did when coming into the hospital in that chair when she's you know, about to give birth, I mean, <laughs> that's yes. an awful lot of energy and it was all believable and, and interesting and, and funny at the same time. Such a wide range of emotion for that, that actress. Now, uh, how did, when, when you cast her, did you have her read one of the scenes? Or did you audition or did you, you, know, you did, what, what did you, do you remember what you had her audition, which scene? In fact, she read the script, uh, uh, all of it before, uh, before coming to the cast. And then uh, we did a meeting and uh, I don't recall exactly which scene, but I think it was the, the, uh, the monologue between her, uh, the dialogue between her and Pamela. Uh, uh, both scenes, the one before uh, they That's enter right. to the room and the second one when they meet in the room. Right. That's right. right. And uh, let's, let's talk about Gabriel, Mr. Vahe. Oh, wow. Gabriel. What a beautiful character. Now, what, what an was, amazing actor. Yes, yes. Was his dancing on the roof written in there or did he decide to do that? No, in fact, we, we let decided me, let me, to do that. Let me, let, me, let, me just, let me just answer that. This, according to Sam, Sam has written that in particular. And he said, this is called a pujatura. I still remember. <laughs> and when I asked him, what's the uh, appoggiatura? He goes, it is something, it's like the condiment on the food, you know? There are some kind of food uh -huh. you eat. It's so delicious, but you feel there is something missing, you know? Uh -huh. Like, it's a nice plate, but, but the condiments are missing, like a decoration or like something. It's like a cherry on the top, okay? So this, and in addition to many appoggiaturas, he has put in the in the film has has really given a very nice taste to to the to the cake let's say so uh, he said one 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 of the uh, appoggiaturas was that he goes on the roof it's not because he wants him to uh, i mean it's not to dance but to be alone and to feel that uh, he has this power over the hospital that the that the hospital is his and uh, he controls everything. Like this is, it's like a ritual. Every night, like like for five or uh, or for ten minutes, he goes out on the on the roof just to make sure that everything is is just going well, and to make sure that everything is under control. You know, it's like his ritual because he's a manager. He's like kind of owner. He's been like like thirty or forty years there. So the hospital is like his baby. You know. So this. He said, Sam, this is essential in his, in his character, in his art. We have to see it, you know? Like, this is something we have to feel with him. It's kind of his pain or his concern, and we have to feel this concern with him. The hospital well-being. The hospital's well-being. This is it's his concern. So this is ap Jatura. And believe it or not, believe it or not, I still remember all, all, all those times, all those times when he used to tell me, Sam, he used to tell me, all the appoggiaturas and he used to explain why these are important in 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 every character's arc wow 
Yeah, yeah. In fact, for for Gabriel, for uh, Vahe, I wanted him to be like the king of this kingdom. It's not only just the manager of the hospital. And going, and we wanted to have a good transition, and this transition can go with him to the uh, top of the hospital where he, as as Isaac said, he's controlling. He has everything in control, and we can also breathe. It's the breathing space where we can breathe with this character who is somehow a, a funny. Uh, a character and people uh, believe it or not uh, people they they laugh when they see him on the rooftop they in the in the cinemas they started laughing when we screened the film they started laughing every time they see gabriel alone on the on the rooftop and add to this that i i knew that uh, gabriel if you give him this space just to play he will do a great performance because he's a great player especially on 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 theater on theater like uh, we told him there, Gabriel, this is your stage and do whatever you want. Unfortunately, we didn't use everything in the edit. I want to tell you a small secret, uh, Chris, that is no more a secret now, that we took off 60 minutes from the uh, first cut. So those 60 minutes, we cut it and we threw it, you know, 60 minutes from the cut, from the first uh, edit. And uh, part of it, we lost some of the of Gabrielle's rooftop scenes uh, because we had some uh, lighting uh, uh, issues uh, problems in relation. We lost we lost the Chris. I think we lost the Chris. So yeah. uh, so we had this uh, need to cut some scenes. George, are you still here? Well, uh, waiting for uh, Chris. Uh, for Chris and to come George. back. I am here. I am here. I'm sorry. Yeah. I am. Let Don't me worry, but we lost we lost the Chris. So waiting yeah. to, uh, for him to come back, we can uh, we can uh, tell a couple of stories ar around the uh, the film but, and maybe maybe. I know that he's Armenian, of course, and automatically any Armenian, you know, leans towards Charles Aznavour. Yes. Who came up with the idea of Charles Aznavour? Uh, um, in fact, I don't remember anymore, but all of us, I think it was it was my idea, Isaac, uh, at, at a certain moment, the, the song or not? No, uh, not the song. The, the, uh, first, you said he has to dance. He has to be like a dreamer. You said Gabriel has to be like a dreamer in his own office. Then you said, I believe that uh, he has to be dancing. He has some concern and some pain that we need to feel with, that we, we need to feel with him. So you said, why not? He dances on Charles Aznavour song, and he's he's his favorite, and uh, because he's, he's very Armenian. fond of it. Yeah, because he's Armenian, yeah. and he's very fond of it. And let's put this as as uh, as, as a layer or as a sub story, if if I want to call it in the film. Yeah, if, but I mean, if you, even if you the, see, the picture of Aznavour on the wall, I mean, that's it's a yes, trick. Yes. I mean, come on, I, the guy is the head of a hospital, and of all pictures. He has a picture of Charles Navour. I mean, yeah, he... but this is the beauty of the composed character. You know, it's a it's a beautiful composed, well composed character. Yeah, no, no, but it was uh, incredible. Uh, uh, another question that I'm going to ask, I was going to let uh, Chris ask. You went uh, on location for a couple of days, and one of the locations was Miziara, Hmais, which is my it's village. Near your house, we shot near your house, exactly yeah. at wall to wall with your house. Yes, I know. <laughs> Oh, and I saw some people in the movie. Actually, one of the ladies passed away since, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've been told that. Yeah, she passed away since, yes. And so how did this shoot go in the village? Well, George, I want to, to, to say something also to our audience that this film is a responsibly, uh, is a socially responsible production. Like we believe, as, as you know, George, we preach at Beirut Film Society and on all our projects in responsible filmmaking. And the part of responsible filmmaking is, is to invest the money in the right place. So when we decided, Isaac and Doris and myself, to, to do the film, we said we have to go to shoot in a place where we can, uh, we can contribute in the local economy and in the local uh, 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 Mandeuver, you know, like people That's who work there as a team. So we took all our locations in the north of Lebanon, which is a region that needs to be somehow uh, supported. And we wanted our students, welcome back, Chris. 
So we wanted Hi, our students who uh, who graduate, uh, who live in the North region in, uh, in Lebanon, to uh, to work in the in the film and to to help them stay in their houses, not to go to Beirut, you know, because we have an internal immigration uh, in Lebanon, migration from the, the mountains to the city. Everyone wants to go and work in Beirut. So we decided to move the production to the north and to do all the film in the north. And as, you, as we all know that if you invest like half a million dollars in, in the production and you pay those money for the carpenters, the painters, the electrician, the people who work in building the set, the team, even the food. So you are paying all the money in the local places where you are shooting. You are making a little bit of a microeconomical movement. So, and we, we did this, this decision on purpose and we went there. And after this film, uh, we decided in Beirut Film Society to launch a film festival in Kura in Amun, which is called Kura Cinema Days. Doris is the director of it. And in Kura Cinema Days, it's a festival. One of the objectives is to promote the north of Lebanon as a location, as a live uh, location for shooting, for filming. And because you can find everything in the north, you know, uh, George, from the city of Tripoli, which is the second Beirut, the second capital, to until to the mountains of the Cedars. And it, we have a lot of variety in Akkar, in uh, Minye, in Zgarta, Pshari. Uh, you can shoot everything you want in this region and also everywhere in Lebanon. So this festival objective is to promote for those villages, for those places to be a uh, location uh, for filming and to make those municipalities film friendly. And one of the competition will be like every year we will give a star for a village that this village now is a film friendly. We will train the municipality and the local authorities on how to deal with people who are filming on ground, how to support them, how to facilitate their work. So, and the, the other thing is that in the North, people are very welcoming. Like we didn't expect how generous they are sure. and on all levels, like they, they open their houses for us. They want everything we need. Like you want to change, come please go. This is a room, enter and you have a room. They gave us a, a full hospital, you know, like a, a full uh, a full floor, empty floor. We, we did everything we want. And also on small locations, everyone was welcoming, was generous. Even everything was cheaper. You know, like uh, if you want uh, food and uh, we had a lot of sponsors in terms of food and catering, they offered things for free. And definitely, uh, I think this was one of the easiest and most uh, pleasant experience in production I had in my life. Yeah, well, I mean, for the little story, as you know, in 1970, that's where I shot my, my uh, second feature. Yes, uh, yes. Nara, you know, I mean, we stayed there three weeks with uh, Samira Ahmad, uh, Shushu, uh, you know, uh, Abdullah Shema, etc. So yes, you are right. The North, uh, the Northerners are extremely, extremely um, uh, uh, welcoming. Uh, they're, yes. they're warm people. Um, but it, it, it's um, what, I was uh, what I was going to add also is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the godfather of the Lebanese cinema, Emil Shaheen. Emil Shaheen. are watching, they know who he is. Chris knows he, who he is. Uh, we've been talking, you know, many times we spoke, and then when you look at where the majority of filmmakers come from, they come from the north. From if Tripoli, from... Back, uh... Yeah, they come from the north. Tripoli, uh, I mean, we're They all... lived in Tripoli, yes, I know. Not only they live, they are originally from the north. Mm. I mean, we, we, we were naming them actually not long time ago. And yes. you can see that the majority, they come from the north, yeah. So anyway. George, George Nasser, George Nasser, George Shamshoum, Emir Shaheen, Randa <laughs> Shahal, Isam Qalawun, uh, uh, and many, you know, the, they, are, they lived in Tripoli and they, uh, Najjar, uh, your friend Edgar Najjar also, and uh, a lot of uh, cinephile and uh, filmmakers uh, uh, that uh, draw that, the history of the Lebanese forgot, cinema come from this region. Yeah, you forgot a couple from Zgharta, uh, you know, and um, I, I, I... Also, Samir Habshi, Mileto, uh, they are from the north. Yeah, exactly. So in any case, so Chris, it's all yours. Uh, you know, we spoke about the Armenian and Charles Nagour. 
in case you were going to ask a question about that. Okay, so go ahead. All right, guys. Pardon me. Pardon me. I screwed up and okay. uh, it's okay. I didn't charge the battery, so uh, I'm embarrassed. But that's we'll fine. Move, we'll move no, forward. no, no. Don't be. Isaac's very it's kind, okay. like George. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He was fired <laughs> again. <laughs> okay. Uh, what What about the the secondary roles? Those those actors. I mean, the mother. Uh, the the gentleman Julius who came in at the end and said, "Where's uh, where do we give blood?" Uh, you know, everybody, whether it was a smaller role or a very small role, I mean, we're right on. Uh, do you want to comment to to that or mention any of them? Yes, definitely, uh, Chris. Uh, in fact, we uh, uh, we made sure that even the smallest roles in the film are very well done. So, in fact, we casted we uh, we did an active casting. Like we decided while writing the script, that this character should be for this woman, for this man, and. Uh, uh, Happily, they agreed because, in fact, I think they love us. <laughs> they love Isaac and myself. <laughs> we are friends, so we know everyone. And uh, uh, they, they were very uh, positive uh, in supporting the film. Can I just say just one, one thing? They, they loved the film so much. They loved the script. They love the script and they they didn't have any problem like they are big stars to come and they just to appear in one scene or in two scenes like Ta'la Shamoun now she's the star of the Arab world you know she's the the female actress in the Arab world and she did a, a, a little role and she did it very well Nicola Daniel also Wafa uh, Tarabai is an icon in the Lebanese cinema and theater and TV and believe it or not she She's, I think she's the most professional. Uh, she, she played the role of the mother of uh, Masad. Masad. So, so she arrives on set early morning and she doesn't leave till the last moment. She didn't, she don't nag. She don't even ask for anything. She just sits and uh, performs her role and then sits silently waiting. And on, during the, the breaks, we, she sits with everyone. She speaks to everyone. She gives positive energy. She doesn't uh, eat. So she doesn't eat. She doesn't, she eat, doesn't eat because she she said she told me she told me very honestly that um, she never eats on set because when she eats the sound of the food in her stomach digesting it makes sound on the microphone <laughs> and this is so bothering. So she said, I don't want to bother the set. I don't want to be a pain in the, in the neck. So I prefer not to eat the whole day until I finish, until I finish shooting. So I believe she came for three days, three or four days. Yeah, three, three days. days. Three she days, came days. For, for the three days, she didn't eat at all. Wow. Not anything. Yeah. Until she ends. Until the yeah. end. Until, until she finishes all, 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 uh, all the scenes. And with them, you don't even need to repeat. The, like they just do it once, and then you sit and okay, should I say any remark? No, it's perfect. Indeed, uh, you know, Indeed. Indeed. it's perfect. Then let's go to the to the other take. Indeed, uh, she's she's that that much devoted, and uh, you know she's she's from from the from the older generation, from the from the old actors generation, the ones who are so authentic and so genuine. And I don't, I don't mean at all to, uh, uh, to like to disrespect the, the, the new generation, no. But this is just a fact that I, I need to say, I need to tell. And this fact is that these people, the old generation, they are that much dedicated to the extent that they don't eat on set because they don't wanna, they, they don't wanna be like a parasite to, to the microphone, believe it or not. That much, although it's, it's not applicable, like, I mean, it's, it's not the case. Uh, the, the, now with the, with the new technology, uh, the, the sound of the food in the stomach, digesting inside the stomach, it doesn't make any parasite, you know? But that's what they believe and they stick to, they stick to it. They are so rigid and they, they, they are so rabid to, uh, to what they believe. So these are the, uh, the authentic old generation school and, and you have to give it up to them. Yes. Yeah. And Chris, we did something in the cast and the secondary roles, like supporting roles, uh, that we, we did a mix between uh, good, famous actors and some 
lovable or agreeable media figures. And we, we like did a, a match. So we have some media figures in the, in the, yeah. in the cast. And those, like one of the doctors, uh, uh, two, in fact, two doctors, and uh, one of them is a social media influencer, and also the nurse, the, the lead nurse in the hospital uh, in the reception. So uh, she's uh, she's also a uh, presenter on a uh, she she does a cinema segment. TV, so TV presenter. TV, TV cinema segment presenter. Now she has a, her YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, so this merge gave, give us both the professional side and artistic and also the uh, marketing side in terms of when you use those faces in promoting the film they are very agreeable for the audience they love them and they want to see it wonderful wonderful such a great feel there must have been on the set i mean people love the script and they they love their their roles and everybody contributed and you're in a nice environment where people are kind I, I didn't get a chance to, to come in on Chadi Haddad, Mr. Carl, the rich husband, and what a great job, what a great arc he had to go from being- Can you expect, can you expect a better actor in this role? <laughs> he, yeah, he was so believable. He was so yeah. unbelievable on the front end and so lovable at the end. Yeah, just wonderful job. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, him and Pamela, they were from the first, from the first moment of the script, they were, uh, like uh, we decided on them from the first moment that those are the characters yeah, of I, Carl and Dre. Uh, I, I, I'm tailored for them. Nah. Exactly. Well, good work, Isaac. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Is there anything? Well, one one question, one character question again. The uh, Mr. Mr. Assad, the the lead. Carpenter. Assad. Thank you. He uh, he had broken glasses. Now, was that his choice or was that written in? His choice, I think. It was his. It was his. It was his. It makes me feel better. I got a pair. It was his choice. Well, many, many things. Uh, Chris, oh, uh, let me tell you what. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Sam, go ahead. So, sorry. Every character, they, uh, they spiced their role, you know? They added something. Every one of them, they had something to add to the character during the readings, during the rehearsals, and on set. They prepared very well. They added a lot of it, uh, even in uh, in their shape. They contributed in the in how they want this character to look, and uh, they were very enthusiastic about the the film, so that they wanted to contribute uh, uh, to the maximum possible. Yeah, that's that's what uh, what I wanted to say. That uh, uh, I don't know uh, if you recall the thing about uh, when he says Assad and and uh, and then he just corrects to him and he says it's Masad. He yeah, corrects yeah. to him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. this it was it was it was like like uh, it was their creation. It was uh, impro improvised on the set. You know. Yeah. Assad, Masad, Assad, Masad. Did they clear yeah. that with you at first, or did they? Uh... Just do it. Yeah, yes, they told yes. about it. They told us, and we said it's perfect. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes, they invented a lot of small things that they you have to be. Yeah. They created a certain synergy, you know, on the on the on the set together. Exactly. When yeah. when when you have such a, such a pro such a pro actors and such big actors and experts, you have to listen to them. You have to let them contribute in the in the film and their role. Um, you have to listen to them because it, it, they make the role more mature. They make the film mature. They make everything mature. They make everything better. So uh, it's a big plus. You have to treasure them on set. You have to treasure them and you have to listen to whatever they, they have or they believe in. E even if you don't like it. Some stuff, well, I forgot it, but I, I, I'm skeptical that some stuff, I didn't like it because maybe I didn't understand it back then because that's my experience, that's my background, that's my age, which is nothing, which is nothing compared to theirs. So I, I accepted it and I said, okay, let's, let's go, let's just go. And Sam told me, just leave it on me. I know that this is, this is so nice and it's gonna be okay. So just trust me. I said, I trust you, Sam, okay. And deep down, I was, I was telling myself, you have to trust them. They are the wine makers. They are the wine makers. You have wine makers on set, okay? So, so, so just relax, relax. And, and really believe it or not, 
they did an amazing job, an amazing job. They certainly did, wonderful job. You guys gave them the reins to do that. And my kudos to, to everybody on the team. Anything you want to add before we sign off? Yes, definitely. I just I want, want to thank you. Uh, just to thank you. Okay, go, go, go ahead, Sam. <laughs> I go want ahead. to uh, to also talk uh, talk that we are working. Uh, this film was produced under also a new uh, production company called Avination. And uh, I would like to also to mention that without the support of our executives, who uh, uh, who uh, popped the, the money in, of course, first at, at first, and then the support uh, on all levels, uh, this film was, was not uh, been uh, couldn't have been possible, you know. So I have to to say that now in Lebanon, in the production, especially in independent production, it's somehow a kamikaze mission to invest in a film, especially with all what's happening and with the economic crisis. And this support and this, those people, they, uh, they trusted us uh, and they, uh, they supported the film and uh, they invested their money. And we hope that we can uh, be up to the, of course, the film was, was uh, in terms of execution, it was uh, everyone is satisfied to a certain extent, let's say 95%. However, let's hope that financially also it will uh, uh, be uh, positive because since we opened the film and everything in Lebanon stopped, you know, first the revolution, then the economic crisis, then the Corona COVID thing. So we are fighting on different levels and filmmakers in Lebanon are struggling to make a career. And uh, what we are trying to do as in uh, Beirut Film Society and in uh, uh, the, comp the production companies that we collaborate with, we are trying to open as much uh, opportunities to young filmmakers to help them uh, sustain and staying in their country and to make a career, to start their career. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, things will go better and we can... Uh, uh, we can continue in this in, the, in doing more productions. Good, I would love I would love to think so, and I'm, I'm assuming it will. Isaac, what did you want to add? Yeah, I, I just wanted to like give uh, like a small thank you hmm. to or a big thank you to to all uh, all who contributed uh, in the film uh, because well, to be honest, we wouldn't have done the film without their love, without their passion without their uh, belief in the, in, the, in the film and in the script, and without them considering us as um, individual performers, like a small, small indie, indie company, they knew that it's an um, uh, uh, individual uh, initiative, and they believed, and, and they gave us all what, they, all, all what they could with all their might, and they didn't care for any commercial side. They just wanted it. To, to uh, just to happen because they loved the film and uh, they loved us. They are our dear friends. Uh, they believed in the story and in the mission, or let's say, let's put it that, that way. They, they loved the, like the messages or the models in the, in the film. So they support it endlessly, endlessly without, uh, without asking anything uh, as a return. So these people, and I, I don't want to call, I can't call them, they are countless. I just want to tell them thank you, big thank you. Without you, all of you, we wouldn't have done the film uh, with such a limited capacity and uh, such limited possibilities. And uh, I believe that the biggest thank you would be uh, by uh, releasing the film in the theater. I believe what what would redeem all, all these all these efforts to these people is releasing the film in the theater and for them to see their products and their efforts on the big screens. So what I hope is that uh, things uh, get really better in this country or in the Middle East, and uh, we will be able to uh, to play the film on the big screen and to redeem all these efforts and and to uh, uh, and to just return a bit of what they gave. So yeah, thank you. Uh, we we so thank you everyone. The starting Sam, starting Sam, and going bottom down. <laughs> because we couldn't keep the release for a long time. We released the film and then after uh, uh, we did the, like uh, screenings for a certain period of time and then we were obliged to stop because of the of uh, all what happened and the, uh, of the turmoil. Right. Yeah. Yes, a lot of turmoil. 
And look, we are now a submission for the Golden Globes. Yes, Thank you, right. uh, George, also for and Asian World Film Festival for contributing in having this film and organizing the qualifying screening. Uh, this is an amazing opportunity also for everyone uh, in the film. Yes. Uh, what do you want to say, George? You're you're muted. Jo George, you're you're fired. <laughs> He's muted. No, I said uh, uh, we need to wrap up. So I yes. just want to say thank you, guys, and thank you, Chris. Thank you, Sam, uh, and Isaac. Thank you to thank all you. our audience uh, following up. And I would like to thank, of course, our sponsor, uh, Naram Wehbe's uh, organization, Creator, Creators Contact Connect. Creators. Thank you, Naram. Uh, that is thank you, Naram. Yeah, the, uh, she is sponsoring the screenings and this uh, Q&A. And, um, you know, uh, uh, I wish a lot of success to your movie. And uh, I would like to take that to this opportunity to wish you a happy new year and uh, to wish Lebanon, my country, uh, a smooth sail to 2021. Uh, uh, inshallah, it will be a better year for Lebanon and it will be a better year for all of us. So God bless you all and thank you very much.